For more insight on that story, we're now joined by Mr. Harley Schlanger, spokesman of the International Schiller Institute, who's joining us on the line from Potsdam, Germany. Mr. Schlanger, welcome to the program. First of all, give us uh, your opinion on the recent comments made by Jens Stoltenberg. He believes that the support of the Western Military Alliance for Ukraine is actually making a difference on the battlefield. Well, I don't know who's briefing Stoltenberg. He's probably being told that by Zelensky and the Ukrainian military. But most observers say that the Ukrainian counteroffensive so far has been disappointing. They don't have enough troops, enough firepower. The Russians are successfully dug in. But Stoltenberg is pushing a line, which is the NATO line, which is to be prepared for permanent war against Russia. And the meeting today will be talking about defense production, which is a bit of a joke because there's deindustrialization going on in Europe and the United States that is a cutting back on industrial capabilities. So unless they're going to orient it all toward military production, it's not going to work. Uh, Mr. Schlanger, uh, as we know, uh, Russia has time and again cited that, uh, first of all, the weaponry and uh, the arsenal that it's providing Ukraine, uh, it's only making uh, the situation more dangerous. There's always going to be the threat that this conflict could morph into something bigger. It could spill into, uh, spill over into other areas. Why aren't uh, NATO countries taking that into account and the long-term effects that that could have? Well, most leaders of NATO countries have made a bet, which is that they can win this war and they're going to keep fighting until they defeat Russia. And they're all in political trouble. Most of these coalition governments are below 50 percent, in some cases below 30 percent in popularity. If they have put everything into this war that they said they had, and that this is a decisive test of Western democracy, they can't afford to lose. They've backed themselves into a corner. And the idea that they're going to go into their Vilnius NATO meeting uh, later this summer and possibly give the NATO status to Ukraine is putting more pressure on them to at least keep the war going until that time. So I think they're not reading the polls. They're blind to that. They have a, a single-minded commitment to defeat Russia. And part of that is based on the idea that the Russians represent a threat, not just militarily, because Russia didn't represent a threat to the West militarily, but a threat to the Western financial system because of the moves toward de-dollarization, in which Russia is one of the key countries involved in that. And one last question, Mr. Schlanger, before we leave you. How much is Europe uh, losing uh, in all of this in comparison to, to the United States? Well, the United States is making some money on the liquefied natural gas. Uh, also, they're, they're getting IOUs for their military production. Europe is in terrible shape. Germany, where I live, the prices continue to go up. The production is going down. The uh, standard of living is falling. Uh, but still, the German people are very complacent. They're, they're not speaking out. And so they're bringing the, this on to themselves. It's a suicidal policy for European countries. The one leader who's looking slightly different is Macron, but you can't really trust him. But he actually asked for observer status at the upcoming BRICS meeting. He talked about not isolating China and Russia. So we'll see. It depends on what happens with the populations in Europe, if there's going to be a change. But right now, they're totally submissive to Biden, Sunak, and, and the so-called rules-based order. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, Harley Schlanger joining us on the line from Potsdam, Germany.